Every differentiable function is continuous but not all continuous function can be differentiable. Whatever the value of x may be, whether it is an increment or a decrement, when you add 4x or when you decrease 4x, the value will be a constant function. So whatever the function value given here, write that only. Now this is in the form of log x minus log y which can be written as log x by y. Hello everyone, a warm welcome to one and all. This is your Shruti ma'am lecturing in Vidyashram, the temple of excellence, Mysore. So in today's session, we will be starting with the new chapter called differential calculus. So calculus is basically used to find the rate of change of quantities. So we are going to calculate the rate of change of the dependent variable with respect to the independent variable. So calculus has wide applications in sciences. Now let's see what are the topics we are going to discuss in today's session. So first we will learn about the differentiability and how to find the derivative of a given function using first principle method. So first let's see what do you mean by the derivative of a function. Now let me take a function y is equal to f of x. As I said differential calculus is basically used to find the small changes that is rate of change of quantities. Clearly from the given equation we can see as you go on substituting the value of x you will get different values of y. So y is dependent on x and hence x is called as independent variable. So let me take some small changes that is small increment of y as well as x. So let me write this as y plus delta y is equal to f of x plus delta x. Now let me find only delta y so I can shift y to the right hand side it becomes y plus f of x plus delta x minus y well y is taken as f of x so delta y is equal to f of x plus delta x minus f of x. I said we are going to find the rate of change of dependent variable with respect to independent variable. So for that let me divide both equation by delta x. Now apply the limit as delta x tends to 0 on both sides. So limit as delta x tends to 0 is delta y by delta x is equal to limit delta x tends to 0 f of x plus delta x minus f of x whole divided by delta x. So this is how we can find the derivative or the rate of change of a y with respect to x using the limit of the given function and it is always denoted by f dash of x. So this is how we can calculate the derivative of any function using the definition. So this definition of differentiation is also called as first principle of derivative. That is first principle of derivative can be written as f dash of x is equal to limit delta x which is a small quantity tends to 0 f of x plus delta x minus f of x whole divided by delta x. So this is called as the first principle of derivative. So using this definition we can find the derivative of any functions. So in according to the first principle of derivative the process of finding the derivative is nothing but the differentiation. Now let's see what is derivative of a function at a given point. So let me take a function y is equal to f of x be continuous function. Why I'm saying here continuous function because a function will be continuous if its left hand limit as well as right hand limit will equal to the 
functional value. So if that is possible, then only we can say f is continuous. And why I'm using the continuous function as a condition here? Because for a function to be derived, it must be continuous function. That is the limit must exist for the function. That is why we have written the limit as delta x tends to zero for the definition of first principle of derivative. Now, as I said, f dash of x represent the derivative of function and this can be obtained at a point x is equal to a. Then how we say that it is derived at a point a. So if x is equal to a is the point and f dash x is the derivative of a function, then x is replaced by a. The derivative at a point a is given by f dash of a and the definition is given by dy by dx is equal to f dash of x limit as h tends to 0 f of x plus h minus f of x is h. Here h is a very small quantity or very small increment of x. So that is delta x is rate of change of x. Now as I said f dash of x can also be written as dy by dx. This says the differentiation of y with respect to x. That means we are finding the change of y with respect to x. So now if this is the function defined then at point a f dash of x, x must be replaced with a now. So the definition of the derivative at a given point x is equal to a is given by f dash of a is equal to limit h tends to 0 f of a plus h minus f of a divided by h. All these are symbolizes the definition of differentiation as with respect to first principle of derivative only. Next we have a note here differentiability implies continuity but continuity does not implies differentiability of a function. That means for a function to be differentiable it must be a continuous function. That is every differentiable function is continuous but not all continuous function can be differentiable. So to find the derivative of a function first the limit must exist. That means it must be a continuous function but all continuous function cannot be differentiable. So along with it, the derivative of any function can be found using different symbols. That is, they may write in the form of dy by dx or sometimes f dash of x or sometimes y dash or sometimes y1. All these symbols are used to denote the derivative of a function. Now, let's study to find the derivative of a function using the first principle method. So what is first principle method for to find the differentiation? That is f dash of x is equal to limit as delta x tends to 0 f of x plus delta x minus f of x whole divided by delta x. So this is the definition of the first principle of derivative. Using this definition, we can find the derivative of any given functions. The first problem here is to differentiate a constant function from first principle. Let me take any function f of x is equal to some k here, where k is a constant function. Now for any value of x, the answer will be k only. Now let us use the definition of the first principle f dash of x is equal to limit delta x tends to 0 f of x plus delta x minus f of x whole divided by delta x. Whatever the value of x may be, whether it is an increment or a decrement, when you add for x or when you decrease for x, the value will be a constant function. The constant function will never change with the values of x. So therefore, here I can substitute limit as delta x tends to 0. Now, the value of this is k and the value of f of x is given as k. So this is delta x. So if you put k minus k becomes 0, so the whole function is 0. So therefore, what we can conclude here, the derivative of any constant function is 0. For example, 
if y is equal to 3 by 2, then dy by dx is 0. For any values of y like pi, e, minus 1, 3, 2 by 7, root 2. So for all the constants, the derivative of a function that is dy by dx will always be equal to 0. Next, we are taking the function of x power n. So let us differentiate x power n from first principle. So let f of x is equal to x power n. Now write the definition of first principle. f dash of x is equal to limit delta x tends to 0 x plus delta x minus f of x whole divided by delta x. So now I have to substitute for f of x plus delta x. If f of x is given then it is x power n. x plus delta x is given then it is x plus delta x whole power n. So that is x plus delta x whole power n minus x power n whole divided by delta x. Now we have studied in the limits of the function that is limit of a function as x tends to 0 x power n minus a power n over x minus e can be written as n into a power n minus 1. Clearly the numerator is of the form x power n minus a power n but denominator is x minus a here we don't have x minus a. So x is actually x plus delta x. So to require that I will add x and I will subtract x. Now you can see this is of the form x power n minus a power n divided by x minus a. So whenever you have this form you can directly apply the limit and write the answer as n into a power n minus 1. So here I will write n into in the place of a you have x. So it is x to the power n minus 1. So, for a function with the x power n, I can write n into x to the power n minus 1. We can take examples for this. If you have y is equal to x cube, then dy by dx is 3 into x to the power 2 minus 1, that is 3x square. So decrease the power by 1 and write the power as a whole number. So that is your answer using n into x power n minus 1. Suppose y is equal to root x is given. We know root x is nothing but x to the power half. So dy by dx will be half into x power half minus 1 which is half into x to the power minus half. Now minus half can be written in the denominator as a power half. So 1 by 2 to the power x to the power half which is nothing but 1 by 2 root x. So directly for a function y is equal to root x the derivative of the function is 1 by root x. Suppose you have any negative number. So let me take y is equal to 1 by x. x can be written in the numerator with negative power. Now what is dy by dx? dy by dx is minus 1 x to the power minus 1 minus 1 which is minus x to the power minus 2 or you can write minus 1 by x square. So shift to the denominator the power will become positive. So n minus 1 means n is already minus 1 here so minus 1 minus 1 becomes minus 2. So this is how we can find the powers of x. Next we have to differentiate e power x from the first principle to write the definition let f of x is equal to e power x f dash of x is equal to limit delta x tends to 0 f of x plus delta x minus f of x whole divided by delta x. Now this is limit delta x tends to 0. If you have x, it is e power x. If you have x plus delta x, it is e power x plus delta x minus e power x divided by delta x. e power x is common here. So you can write this as limit delta x tends to 0 e power x into e power delta x minus 1 divided by delta x. Again using the standard limit 
that is limit x tends to 0 e power x minus 1 by x is equal to 1. So if you apply the limit for this, this is of the form e power x minus 1 by x. So here this will remain same and this is 1. So the answer is e power x. So for a function e power x, the derivative of the function is also e power x. Now let me take an example. Suppose if you have e power 3x, then how you are going to write this function? Write the constant, then it is again e power 3x only. So any function of the form e power ax, its derivative will be a into e power ax only. Suppose you have e power minus x, then the answer is minus e power minus x. So because you have minus 1 as a constant here, so write the constant and write the derivative of a function because for any e power x, the derivative is also e power x. Next we have differentiation of log x from first principle. Let us take f of x is equal to log x, f dash of x is equal to limit as delta x tends to 0, f of x plus delta x minus f of x whole divided by delta x. So here I can write this as limit delta x tends to 0 log of x plus delta x minus log x whole divided by delta x. So whatever the function value given here, write that only. Now this is in the form of log x minus log y, which can be written as log x by y. So I'll separate 1 by delta x. Now this can be written as log x plus delta x divided by x. Again I can divide it by x. So it is limit delta x tends to 0, 1 by delta x log 1 plus delta x by x. So here I will change delta x by x has some h. So let delta x by x is equal to some h. Then this implies delta x is equal to h into x. Also look at the limit as delta x tends to 0. If you put delta x is equal to 0, h also tends to 0. Now replace everything with h now. So here limit has h tends to 0. 1 by delta x is 1 by h into x. Here it is log 1 plus h. I'll take 1 by x outside because here h is the variable. So x becomes constant. So 1 by x limit as h tends to 0. 1 by h into log 1 plus h. Again this is the standard limit of the form log of 1 plus x over x as limit of x tends to 0 whose value equal to 1. So therefore this whole value is 1 now. So the answer is 1 by x. So therefore for a function of log x its derivative is 1 by x. Suppose if you have log x plus 1 as a function then the derivative dy by dx is 1 by x plus 1. So any function with the log can be written as 1 by x form. Next I have to differentiate sin x from the first principle the same definition f of x is equal to sin x f dash of x is equal to limit delta x tends to 0 f of x plus delta x minus f of x whole divided by delta x. So the function becomes limit delta x tends to 0 sin x plus delta x minus sin x whole divided by delta x. So this can be written as limit delta x tends to 0 sin 
c minus sin d is 2 cos x plus y by 2. That is x plus delta x plus x by 2 sin x plus delta x minus x by 2 whole divided by delta x. Now solve this. You have limit delta x tends to 0. So here plus x minus x get cancelled. I will shift this 2 to the denominator. Numerator is x plus x 2x. 2x by 2 is x. So it becomes cos x plus delta x by 2 into sin delta x by 2 divided by delta x by 2. We have a standard limit of the form limit as x tends to 0 sin x divided by x is equal to 1. So here this is of the form sin x by x. So the limit will become 1. Now apply delta x tends to 0 here it is cos x plus 0 because delta x is 0. So the value is cos x. So the derivative of the sine function is cos x. In the similar way, we can derive for the function of cos x whose derivative will be minus sine x. Next, we will take up tan x as a function. So let's see f of x is equal to tan x. f dash of x is equal to limit delta x tends to 0 f of x plus delta x minus f of x whole divided by delta x. Again limit delta x tends to 0 tan x plus delta x minus tan x divided by delta x. So I will replace tan as sine by cos. So that is equal to limit delta x tends to 0 sin x plus delta x over cos x plus delta x minus sin x by cos x whole divided by delta x. Now here we have a fractions in the numerator let us resolve it. So limit delta x tends to 0 we can write it as sin x plus delta x into cos x minus cos x plus delta x into sin x. So if I take delta x outside here I can write this as delta x into cos of x plus delta x into cos x. Now this is of the form sin a cos b minus cos a sin b which is sin a minus b formula. So therefore it is limit delta x tends to 0 sin a is x plus delta x minus b is minus x over delta x cos x plus delta x into cos x. Now clearly x and minus x get cancelled. Now the limit becomes sin delta x whole divided by delta x into cos of x plus delta x into cos x. Now apply the limit as delta x tends to 0. Again this is of the standard form sin x by x whose value is 1. Now in the denominator it becomes cos of x plus 0 into cos x. x plus 0 is x. Cos x into cos x is 1 by cos square x. We know that 1 by cos x is secant x. So 1 by cos square x is secant square x. So this is the derivative of tan function. So in today's session we have learned few derivatives of the standard function. So let's list out now. So here y and here I'll write dy by dx. So what are the functions we have studied? So for a constant function the derivative is 0. For a function of the form x power n the derivative is n into x power n minus 1. For exponential function derivative is also exponential. For log function the derivative is 1 by x. 
for sin it is cos and for tan it is secant square x. So similarly we can find for other polynomial functions as well as trigonometric functions also. So now here I am going to write the derivatives of some standard function. So let me take y dy by dx. So we have found sine. So for cos x the derivative is minus sin x. We have found tan as secant square x. Well cot can be written as minus cosecant square x. Secant x is secant x tan x. Cosecant x is minus cosecant x tan x. We have exponential form of a power x whose value will be equal to a power x into log a. So similarly we can find the derivatives of any function using first principle method. So these are the standard functions whose derivatives are given. So all these standard values of the derivatives are necessary to solve the problems. We'll meet you in the next session. Until then keep watching, keep learning and keep exploring. Thank you.